Well, welcome everybody. My name is Alicia Orsini, and some of you might know me as AJ. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we're gonna talk about personal branding tonight, which is oh so much fun, uh, because as I was talking to some people earlier, personal branding is like an ever-evolving thing. And I'm going through my own little evolution right now, so we're gonna get really personal today. <laughs> we're gonna get personal with each other, so we're gonna make some friends today. So if you wanna follow me, I'm uh, at Alisa Orsini on Instagram. And for Women in Film, it's at uh, Women in Film Video New England with me. And so uh, I'll tell you really quickly, uh, Women in Film, we are um, a New England organization that is basically looking to empower women storytellers in uh, the film industry, the media industry across the board. And we do have male members. We have male allies. So uh, men are welcome to join us as well because you can't make change in a silo, right? So we have male allies as well. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to learn more about women in film, catch me after and we'll talk more about that. All right, let's get down to some of the nitty gritty about what we're talking about here. Um, personal branding, it's that mark, it's that thing that makes you stand out from everybody else. Um, you know, and like I said, it's ever changing and ever evolving and you kind of know a little bit what your brand is sometimes. Uh, and we're gonna maybe reevaluate our brands today. Okay, why bother even talking about this? Well, how many of us freelance? Any freelance? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Freelancers are growing. In fact, the freelance market is going to take over pretty soon. Uh, according to the study by Upwork, they revealed that uh, freelancers are growing at a rate of three times faster than any other job market. I mean, it's so easy to do, right? You've got access to building your own websites. You've got social media. Uh, you know, a lot of, I mean, our phones. Things that we can do with our phones are amazing. So it's growing. So you really want to be up on this. Okay, so your personal brand, there's a lot of stuff up there. <laughs> I like to talk about uh, the three C's because when you're thinking about your brand, you're also gonna be thinking about your digital footprint. Does anybody know what I mean by digital footprint? Kind of those, those breadcrumbs you leave from your Google searches or the places that you are. Uh, I like to talk about you know the companies that you belong to or work for, colleges and colleagues. Um, my parents, only one parent is on Facebook. And uh, I was really happy when my father got on Facebook because then all of his friends who were on Facebook stopped tagging me in all of that stuff that he, stupid stuff he did in college. It's like, oh, I found this picture and here we are doing this really dumb thing. Because all of that stuff that they were posting and tagging me in then became part of my brand, <laughs> became part of my digital footprint. So it was kind of nice to have it separated. So you have to kind of evaluate those things all the time. Okay, social media profiles. How many people have, oh, let's say a LinkedIn page? Oh, this is more than usual. I am so, you should give yourselves a pat on the back for that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, keeping that LinkedIn page. How many of you have looked at your LinkedIn page in like the last week? Okay, all right. All right. You're, you're a really plugged in crowd, I like this, this is good. Keeping tabs on your social media, where are you on your LinkedIn, where are you on your Instagram? Um, how many of those Facebook pages do you have, do you manage, where is all that stuff? Are you using high quality photography? Do you look, uh, do you look good? Now, okay, this is not exactly high quality photography, but you know, it's out there, I look quirky, it's part of my brand. <laughs> Let's talk about some th people that in my circle, I have said, okay, well, these people are kind of getting it right. Uh, I recently became a mom about 15 months ago. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I actually did not put any baby pictures in this presentation. I'm so sorry. I will show you baby pictures later. Um, <laughs> so, but I've been thinking a lot about mom blogs. Mom blogging is like a real crazy thing. And talk about people that really got to know their brand and how it evolves because of course as you're having kids you evolve and uh, the Garcia Diaries is really a great one they talk about body shaming they talk about uh, you know what it's like going through postpartum depression all these sorts of mom things but if you go and look at her website you know you're on her website her color scheme is the same as on her Instagram page as on her Facebook page and she's really defined who she is uh, a local woman who I wanted to point out is Michelle Meek. Michelle Meek is, uh, runs NewEnglandFilm.com, and 
hers is a lot more simple. It's, hey, this is me. This is where you find me. Here's my book. Here's my TED talk. Uh, and that headshot that she has, she's been working that headshot for a few years now. <laughs> it's on everything. <laughs> but that's it. She's like, this is me. This is what I'm putting out there. There you go. Some other fun, quirky ones that I like to follow is the Everywhereist. Uh, and this woman, she's also an author, but everything about her on her website is right up top. You know, here's the book, here's the blog, here's about me, and here's a travel guide. And she is a little bit more eclectic. She's got a lot going on. But once you've logged on to her about something that you like, you can find everything about her really quick, which is great. Another local gal I wanted to talk about real quick is uh, Nikki Groom. She's down in Rhode Island, and she just lives, she's British, she lives this force of nature thing. Everything that she posts, she's got these, like the, the dark eyeliner, she's the platinum blonde, this is always her thing. And whether it's on her Facebook page, or on her book covers, or her flyers, it's always the same kind of thing. And then uh, these gals right here, um, these, uh, this is one, another Rhode Island group. I, know, I got like really into Rhode Island when I put together this presentation, I don't know why. Michelle Meeks from Rhode Island too. Uh, these gals actually do some branding for you. Uh, the gal in the center there, Brittany Murphy, uh, excuse me, Brittany Taylor, Brittany Murphy, oh my goodness. Um, she is a photographer and she f found that uh, a lot of her friends that were trying to be freelancers didn't have high quality oh. photography. That's me getting an email. Um, so she started doing that photography for personal branding. How many of you have ever sat and gotten professional headshots done? OK, a couple. I have to tell you, iPhones are amazing and to do great things. If you don't have really good friends or if you can't afford a $200 session, get a friend in some nice day, like on a nice cloudy day where all that light is even to go out and take some nice headshots with an iPhone. It'd be great. And speaking about uh, headshots and actors, <laughs> it's another one of my board members, uh, Christine uh, Altan, who she knows what she's about. Again, this headshot, she is working. It's on everything. You know when it's her. Um, her brand, she's got a little bit of a, a darker thing going on with her stuff. She's, uh, and then she uses this green. It's actually called Mars Green. It's one that's supposed to be like the most popular color out there. Universally, they did a big study of like what was a really popular color. It's actually the color of the Vox Pop uh, out there too. Oh, is my hair on the way? I'm sorry. You want to edit that? <laughs> um, yeah. So she has latched onto this color and built a color story for herself around that. Okay. So your personal brand. We've talked a lot about stuff. We're going to do a few exercises here in a second, and we're going to go through some steps as well. Personal brand is really how you see yourself and then how others see you, somewhere in the middle. There's like the truth about ourselves and then there are the things that we keep back. Because <laughs> you know, what you put out on social media and out in the world isn't always our authentic selves. So when you're doing branding for yourself, you're kind of walking this very fine line of here I am authentically. And this is what they tell you in storytelling and branding constantly. Be authentic, be authentic, be authentic. OK, how authentic do you want? Do you want the TMI authentic me? <laughs> no, you want to pull it back just a little bit. So people think you're you know, real, but at the same time, you're, uh, you're polished. How many of you Google yourself? <laughs> yes. When was the last time you Googled your name? Who feels, let's talk about my identity crisis. So this is my old website. Um, and right now it's sitting on AliciaOrsini.com. I am one of those people. I actually have four names. My full name is Alicia Jean Orsini Libida. Oh my gosh. So my husband is a libida, and I made fun of him for the longest time, you know. And I got a libida, living libida loca. He got me back and married me. Um, so. I've been trying to figure out, and I work for uh, other, otherwise doing um, you know, women in film. I also work for NPR, and I had an on-air career for a while. And uh, Alicia Labita sounded really interesting on air. So I went back to Orsini. Uh, so now I'm in my, my own reinventing. Like, OK, I think I'm a new person. Like I said, I just had a kid. Uh, I'm changing what I'm doing. I, don't, I come out of film and television. 
I work more for radio now. So what do I look like? So we're going to go through some of the steps that I'm going through currently <laughs> because this is always forever changing. So we talked about one of the steps to take is, of course, to Google yourself. Of course, that's going to not continue right where I left off. All right, Googling yourself. All right, let's reflect a little bit. What are you good at? What are you an expert at? What kind of things do you do? And have you ever created a mission statement for yourself? It's a little out there, right? It's kind of more, mission statement is a very brandy way to talk <laughs> about it. You can almost say, what is your mantra? I carry a camera and I'm not afraid to use it. That was mine for a while. <laughs> right now I am a woman under construction. It's kind of getting built. So it's kind of almost like a little internal phrase. You could think about your mission in that sense as well. Another step to take, writing some content. So once you've identified what you're good at, whatever it is, you've got to build some content around it. All right? I'm not very good at writing. I am good at talking. <laughs> so what I do is I actually talk into my phone, into the Notes app, and I write things down that way because I'm good at talking. And then I go back and I edit it. Uh, creating content is hard. It's easier for me making, uh, taking photos and video. It's a whole lot easier for me. Some of you are probably a lot more comfortable with writing. So whatever it is you're comfortable with in that content sphere, start creating some. It doesn't have to be great first time out. Just start building it. And then you're going to edit it and boil it down and feel like it's going to uh, fit your brand. OK, you are already ahead of the game with LinkedIn. I'm so proud of all of you. <laughs> if you're not doing LinkedIn, then get in on that. Uh, we talked about your digital footprint, what's going on there, uh, and building that website. So uh, how many people have a website already? OK, what kind of platforms are you guys using? And Wix is actually what I'm using for, uh, I will recommend Wix to you guys. Um, it's a drag and drop thing. I am not a coder. I do not do coding. So this is a WordPress site, which is, I'm keeping it fairly simple right now, just because that's how I'm feeling. My previous site, this is Wix. And it is, uh, it's a lot more interactive and reactive. And you know, uh, it's literally drag and drop. And uh, you can buy a domain name through them as well. So if, if you're not a web person and you need an intro to a website, you can try Wix. Another step to take, you're doing, which is you're getting social. You're getting out there. <laughs> um, and this is a, a recommended step that if you feel like or if you have the ability to go and talk about the thing you're an expert about or even meet with a small group and teach about um, is always a great way to kind of bounce ideas off. You know, community is a big part of your brand. Uh, whether, you know, we, again, in the internet age, we're all on our phones, we feel very isolated, you can do everything right on your computer and never meet another human. It's not healthy <laughs> and it's also not good for your brand. Which brings us also to networking. You have to get off the web to make what you do on the web work. That's just, that's just social media. <laughs> it's social. It's right in there. Social. You got to get social. And then my last step, evaluate and repeat. <laughs> and you can do this as often as you like. Um, you know, I'm personally going through uh, the identity crisis of becoming a mom. It doesn't have to be that big of a change in your life to reevaluate your brand. It could be like, hey, it's a new year. I'm a new me. Don't do it in January, because January is like just <coughs> terrible. You know, you know what, uh, like, you know, you get, do resolutions in January, and what do you end up with? A great January. That's it. <laughs> do it in March. I don't know, do it in October. <laughs> We've gotten real serious now. <laughs> Let's talk about some color. <laughs> Okay, so you just wrote down a whole bunch of words. All right, I come out of the film industry and I used to be a production designer and I am in love with the psychology of color. Is anybody else like are nerdy like this? Okay, great. <laughs> so these are some words, and you can Google this too, you know, psychology of color. Um, you know, when you think of big brands that are out there like McDonald's, what are their colors? Red and yellow. Uh, a lot of food industries, you get red, yellows, and greens. If you're thinking about solar technology or water companies, or you know, they, they are uh, the greens and blues. You know, yeah, you can think about, okay, Target. 
they're red, you know, yeah. So uh, Facebook, blue. Blue is seen to be very trustworthy. Uh, well, they're working on that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> different colors mean different things in activation. So while you're working on your brand, you can start thinking about what kind of colors do I want to represent me? And this changes all the time. Like uh, I was pointing out uh, Christine Altan earlier, she's got that Mars green going on, uh, which is kind of a calming color, uh, but also it's got a little bit of uh, activation in it as well because it's a little unearthly. Um, you know, you've got your, <laughs> there's a great book for film nerds out there. If it's purple, it means they're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great, but in, in movies, in movies, if somebody is wearing purple or if there's a purple hue or something else is going on, it means that somebody's probably either going to go through a character change or they're probably going to die. It's really great. Um, we, we could talk about this all day long, but um, okay, green. Some, uh, so in film, uh, it's, you know, out of this world, unearthly, so you have green aliens, the Wicked Witch of the West is green. Uh, but when uh, you're talking about marketing, green can be calming and soothing and peaceful, is identified with money, but also with green technologies is now being redefined. So uh, spend a little time with your colors and kind of decide what colors do you want to work for you. All right. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about building a website. We, and you're going to dive deeper into it when you go to the uh, Somerville Community Media Center and take that class. But let's just talk about a few things that I've been doing uh, that I want to talk about with, that go hand in hand with your branding. Um, a well-designed website is the structure uh, uh, when you look at something. How many of you are familiar with the rule of thirds when it comes to photography? Okay. The rule of thirds, I should have done a slide about that. <laughs> the rule of thirds is when, you know, you have a grid and your eye moves around and the important things are put in certain points. There's a lot of psychology that goes into like uh, websites, but also like building menus. Your eye goes to the highest price point on a menu because by design, somebody designed it that way for you to hold the thing and look at something specifically. So when you're designing your website, think about that. Think about, okay, where do you want people to look first? What do you want them to see first? Um, think about those colors. Contrasting colors helps you organize things. Warm colors spark excitement and action. Cool colors give you a sense of calm, a sense of chill. Um, Peeling websites are clean and structured and purposeful, and I like to uh, draw out my websites before I start actually building them. Um, we talked a little bit about content creation before, keeping the copy short and sweet. I go back to the journalism here. Who, what, when, where, why, how? <laughs> Who are you? What do you do? When do you do it? Where do you do it? So why do you do that? And how the hell do I find you? Um, update it. Make a schedule. This doesn't mean, um, you know, I, every Monday I need to go and do things on my website. Eh, every six months I better go make sure that everything on my website is accurate. Um, <laughs> Is your website easy to get to? Does it load quickly? Probably if you're dealing with GoDaddy issues. <laughs> Sometimes they're a little slow. I used another company called Bluehost and I got all up in their business because my website never loaded because I had a whole lot of video on there because you know I was doing video production. It better load right. Mind your first impression. What is the first thing they're gonna see? What is the first thing that they're going to uh, digest about you on your website. Boom, what's right there? Uh, remember usability. You know something is bad when you see it, right? You're on a website, I can't find out where this place is, it doesn't say the times, there's no who is even, you know bad when you see it. Learn from it and say, okay. And now I'm going to share with you my super secret. Um, this is a website called Unsplash, unsplash.com. And they have, has anybody heard of Unsplash before? Yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yes. Unsplash. This is royalty free, use it as you want, community photography. Because <laughs> some of us just don't have time to take pretty pictures, right? Make sure that you get a good headshot of yourself, but for everything else, there's great other great websites out there, but I use this a lot, Unsplash, because uh, actually everything in my uh, um, presentation I stole from Unsplash. <laughs> 
because who has time for any of that? You can find literally anything on there. So uh, that's one of my secret little resources. I use this for work I do for NPR. I need to find it. We're talking about marijuana. I need to find a picture of a marijuana plant. Great. I'm going to go find it right now. <laughs> I need to find, a, pff, I don't know, a picture of Somerville. I need a Somerville skyline. OK, let me go find it. And there it is. Uh, yeah, it's stock photos that are going to make your life a whole lot easier for you guys. Do you have questions about anything I've talked about or anything I didn't talk about that you're like, oh, I really want to do this thing. How do I do it? Not going to happen overnight, but you've already started the process today. You've got your four words. You've got, you know, you're thinking about color schemes. You've networked tonight. Pass out some, you know, business cards and talk to other people and, you know, bounce off things with people too. So you have to think of this group and Somerville Community Media Center and of course women in film as uh, you know we're your hive mind now. Reach out to us. You can reach out to me again if you google my name and you can't find me you broke google. But of course this is where you can find me. <laughs> so without further ado that's it.